Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome to my hardcore Minecraft world, where today it's time for a new farm. I find myself using the three types of mushroom blocks in builds very often, like right there, but I don't currently have a good way to get a lot of them. So today we're building a huge mushroom farm, fully equipped with a storage room, a brand new pig pen, and I'm going to attempt to make the journey to bring home mushrooms, hoping to find the ultra rare brown mushroom in the process. As I love the fact that I've now survived 5,200 days in this world, yet there are still some things I haven't done or haven't even seen. So leave a like in this video to support my channel and please consider subscribing as it helps me out so much. Before we jump over to the mushroom farms, I've been busy fixing this, this floating terrain I just never did anything with. So I did what I do best, terraform. The, the front, the terraform the front. Extending the hill down with some grass blocks at a fairly gradual slope where I added in some stone boulders like the ones over at my custom mountain to add in a beautiful little vineyard at the entrance of the city where this definitely gets tons of sunlight, totally realistic with a giant tree next to it. But moving on, as I've been working on my starter castle too, finally taking the time to redo the interior of the map room hallways and finish off this space just a tiny a bit more. With the ceiling built out using blackstone and deep slate, I want to bring in the foggy glass floor underneath. This took a lot of trial and error working through a bunch of different ideas. Eventually, I did decide on using blackstone for the floor and magenta glass stacked up in the middle for that foggy effect. Where we now have this with a little gray glass on top to dull the colors down a bit, but I'm really happy with the overall result we have. Now I just need to figure out what to put in here, but the second hallway is done too. Over here, I have a red mushroom tree farm that previously was for brown mushrooms before I swapped them out recently. Until I realized that I did it wrong for the brown mushrooms. This one was way too small and they're too cramped together. Luckily, this turned out to be the perfect spot for our red mushroom trees. Look at them all coming in here. Please, thank you, thank you, please go, please, you, ah, perfect. This works by having a piece of puzzle for the mushroom block itself to rest on, a dispenser looking at that, then underneath here we have a network of redstone connecting up to all of the different dispensers, linking them all back to this lever which when we push it down, just activates this little clock here. I need a new place for brown mushrooms to grow, probably up here on the hillside. And we divide it with a river along here that'll be functional too, hopefully. Starting by removing all of the oak and birch trees to clear out the space. Definitely gonna need to flatten this space a bit, but first we need the river. I'll probably use a lot of these logs later, so I'm just gonna store them over here in a double chest and then I can start picking up all of the dirt and everything else now. We have a pretty natural dip in the mountain here, so I'm thinking the river can start up next to that tree, come down this way in a bit of a waterfall, and then it needs to continue down here. Close to kind of be a border on the edge of the red mushroom tree farm, but this is gonna be a bit of a challenge to build in itself, as I wanna have one continuous water source flow the entire way so we can put items inside of it and they will travel down to a storage room down that away what that means is every seven blocks i'm gonna need to drop it down so that this can continue flowing along so i put a water bucket down at the base of the waterfall and started digging out the river to make sure it worked all the way it is a little deeper than i expected but i can drop items in anywhere up here at the top and they got they all got stuck right there okay maybe not quite the top i can drop items in here anywhere near below slightly to the top and they we'll make it all the way down to the bottom. That should work to fix it. There goes the stair and yes, perfect. All the way down. Now our waterfall definitely needs to start from somewhere. So I'm just going to tear away the dirt along the mountainside for now and we can send it all the way up. Now that we're up at the next dirt section, we can just probably hide it somewhere right back behind this tree for Minecrafty river's sake. It's fine. And it looks like everything is properly coming all the way down to the base. We have waterfall. Nice. Definitely could use some more love, but we have the base shape in now. And ooh, I probably don't want this. Something tells me I don't want a giant thing of lava next in my mushroom farm. Ah, much better. Like it was never there. 
with that done i need to flatten out the land up here to be able to grow some of our brown mushroom trees instead of just the red ones i'm thinking we can start by digging out a few terraces that we can use to grow the trees on and slowly step up the side of the mountain if parts of the mushroom trees fall inside the river here that's actually a-okay as they'll go directly into the storage room right away so we can bring ourselves right up to the edge here and we'll detail that out as a nice cliff later so red mushroom trees are five blocks wide where brown mushroom trees are seven blocks wide and you can see the spacing inside of here i currently have one two three four five we need that to be six air blocks in between for all of our brown mushroom trees so if we start with one right here as our pods all then we go one two three four five six and then our seventh will be right there that'll allow the mushroom trees to grow up and perfectly touch each other right in the middle but they won't overlap so it should mean everything is able to grow i i really hope we're gonna do one row here and make sure it works and then do the rest gonna need a little bit of pods all down here our brown mushrooms and bone meal we don't need the dispensers and everything fancy for the first test so we can just put these guys right here bone meal him into a big tree and hope that works right here <laughs> yes it does oh very big tree okay that is gonna stand out a lot uh all right let's yep let's do it let's yeah let's see how this goes yeah definitely not rethinking the decision to make a giant mushroom tree farm right here at the base of the mountain no 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 not at all look at it falling in the river yes go all the way to the storage that will exist eventually man i have got a long to-do list today let's get rocking since that first row worked out so well i want to have one row of brown mushroom trees per terrace so it slopes up consistently which means a lot of time spent digging out the rock and dirt to clear space for the big shrew where we now have this with 22 red mushroom trees and space for 19 brown mushroom trees but it is a little rough here against the mountain so i grabbed a little bit of tough and polished andesite that we can use to start a bit of a retaining wall back here i'm just gonna have to smooth and terraform this section out a lot quick 10 minutes of terraforming later and you can barely tell i did anything which is a good thing by the way we we want that now before i set up all the redstone for this i want to make sure that all of these mushrooms can actually grow up together and this way i can know if i actually need to expand it again or not and there we go looks like all of the trees do grow up lovely the mass of brown mushroom blocks is really here right now Ooh, that's a little ugly right i think i gotta chop them all down so that we can actually move on with building the redstone and these things are just gonna get in the way All of the mushroom trees are now gone and that was a really good haul we have 19 mushroom tree plots so i cried while crafting 19 dispensers one by one then thankfully a quicker process of placing them all down on the ground now i want to hide most of the wiring underground like before so i need to clear out a little space underneath the dispensers to connect them all up via redstone which will all link up back here to the start with a single redstone clock we can turn on then going full flip stone here i'm using redstone dust and redstone torches on the side sides of blocks to link these all up together simply probably not the most efficient thing but it should work then to start this i do need a stack of bone blocks for each dispenser to fill them with bone meal which means running back to every single one of the dispensers uncrafting a stack of bone blocks and putting the bone meal into the dispenser manually and now for the first time we can turn this on to grow up the trees and i'm really happy that this is working out we almost have complete coverage on our mushroom trees my nice little squares here to allow light through i have also added in a little bit of stone along the river to clean that up a bit more and before we get too far into these things i want to come over here and build up a little shack that we can put around these guys just as a place that we can have a nicer spot to flick the farm on and off slabs can go on top here and i don't want to push this one that way any farther as it'll interrupt that red mushroom from growing but on the roadside we can extend out a few campfires for ourselves to burn our toes and get the nice decoration do, 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 do. put these bull blocks here but i don't think i want them I think instead we leave the full block there above the stair and then we just run our slabs over and then we could do a double block in there and then slabs again yep that looks much better i can't dig this down any further as the redstone clock is right there so we can just bring it up instead with a few oak planks and grabbing some spruce fences for ourselves maybe we just double stack those here light source added in and that looks pretty good it's meant to be basic okay it's it's fine it's we're gonna leave it it's fine i just need to repeat this again at the brown mushroom tree farm and done for round two that should do up here definitely pretty simple but i think they're gonna 
work. We just need to get a pathway up there that'll probably connect through our lumber mill. But outside of that, where do I go from here? I don't know. I guess I need a plan. We already have the red and brown mushroom trees here, so the farms are done, meaning it's time to decorate. The lumber mill can go here in the middle. Then I really want a pig pen as they might help find the truffles. And then I also really want mushrooms here for the vibes and a mushroom cave somewhere. Let's start by finishing off the tree farms with a small retaining wall along this side. Quick trip down into the quarry for the stone storage room, as I think I want to use a lot of cobblestone for it. Stairs and slabs. We'll get some more blocks of detail later as we're going, but for now, I just kind of want to get something in place here to stop most of the mobs from coming in. It's looking pretty good, but for a little extra detail here, we can break some of our cobblestone and just add in a little bit of stone and andesite to texture up like a classic Minecraft wall. Now, I did expand the wall a little bit farther back here into the valley, so we can start clearing out a few more of these trees and use this for a further expansion if we need it later on. And there we go, all textured up. I'm not sure how much space I actually added, but that should be enough for a few extra trees if we want to expand either of these. That'll be as far south as the bill is going to go for now. I want to focus on adding the lumber mill in, but first I need to finish the river. Time to dig it out even further to extend down to the main river. I guess I need a bridge here now too. It's a little hard to get across. And now finally, after way too long, we can go into the project book here and mark off these two projects as completed. Before I take another step, I got a plant field. Episode 48 and over 5,200 days survived in this world. Wow, honestly didn't expect to get here. Thank you all so much for the support on this nearly two year old series. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what projects you think I should do next down in the comments as I'm always looking for new ideas. And while you're down there, please be sure to leave a like on this episode and click the subscribe button if you're new. It helps me out a ton. And there we go. Another potato field ready for the stew. Before I forget, we need to name the Star Trainer. And a few people from last episode called out to name him Captain Flint from Treasure Planet. And I kind of love it. So now we have Captain Flint living up above the Giga Tree, flying high in the sky as our Star Trader. Now I was planning to build the lumber mill next right over here, but my brain is just not really in builder mode right now. So instead, let's clear out the space over here and work on a smaller pig pen. Once all these leaves decay, that should be enough room. The goal is to create a covered area for the pigs and an outdoor mud pit. So I'm crafting down a load of different spruce materials to get started on this. Now I didn't have any mud at home, but I think I left a shulker box out here somewhere. Maybe in this mess, this, this could be good. Mud, a little, that, that should do, that should hopefully do. Oh my gosh, I left so many materials out here. This should be a good amount of stuff to get ourselves started over here. And I got a loose idea of what I want to do, except it might help to flatten the area out just a little. Okay, so the plan I have here is that we can create a bit of a covered section back here that's gonna stretch on for a good ways, probably about this long. And then in front of that, I wanna continue around with a yard for the pigs to be able to play inside. Now to make it so our pigs can't jump out, on top of every single one of these spruce trap doors, we're gonna add in an oak trap door standing up and some fence gates here to get in. Then the main structure I wanna turn into a bit of a lean-to, so we're gonna bring ourselves up four spruce logs here on the front, grab some spruce slabs and slowly start stepping this down going two blocks at a time should work and for a simple wall on the inside for now we're just going to add in some of our spruce planks and of course stripping down all of our spruce logs Our spruce is just going to be a trim around the outside for now. And what I'd like to do on the inside is bring in some of our mossy cobblestone, a lot of our mud brick. And then if I can fit it in in a few locations, maybe like right in here, we can also add in a teeny tiny bit of moss. On top of the few pieces of moss up here, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of grass as if it's growing over. And underneath, how do we hide that? Well, for starters, I think we can just extend a spruce slab out here and a few extra supports thrown in with our stairs and a few of the slabs. And then I think going across here to hide most of the moss, if a little is showing, that's totally fine, but we can just add in a few more of our trap doors. Then up here, a little bit of oak can go in just right along this, I guess. The pigs aren't really gonna care. I don't 
think they can actually look up too well. Then to age the structure down, we can take out a little bit of the strip spruce and just add in a little bit more of our oak. Without any decorations actually added in for the space, this looks pretty good with some fences and oak trap doors along the back. Now as one final addition here for a second yard for the piggies to hang out in, we're gonna have a little space here in the front with some of our fences. And this can kind of be much more of the pig style mud pit. But we can make it look a little bit nicer than this. Maybe we run some trapdoors along the top of the fences. I don't think the pigs can jump that. And then we can remove a few of them as well and bring in a few of our birch leaves. I think I'm going to have most of the pigs in there anyways. A few extra birch leaves thrown around really to kind of show that we're in the forest where we'll add in some custom trees here soon. Now comes the detail face. Changing out the floor and adding in all of the things our piggies need. Now I just need some piggies. We got food troughs ready to go for them. We got a little water over there. And then just a lot of just a good old pigsty action around here. Maybe we can find some out here in the woods. Something tells me all the animals out here have died though, but we might be able to get lucky. No, I definitely remember murdering a lot of animals in that forest on day one. Ooh, a cow. Any pig friends? No? Okay. We have a pig over in the birch forest. Yes. Okay. We've got one. We just need to find a friend. Come on, buddy. Let's get you home. Well, your new home. Very far away from here. We do have a massive clearing out here. So maybe there's another pig. Yes. Oh, he's in the grass. You can't escape me. Oh, the other one escaped me. Okay, two pigs in tow. I've just got to get them all the way back to spawn. And I'm like, it's on the other side of that mountain. All right, piggies, here we are all the way back to your new home. Come on in, come on in, come on. The mud is perfectly fine. You're going to love it. No, figure out how to walk through the door, please. No, this this way. Not through the trap doors, through the door. Through the gate, through the gate. Yes, yeah, there you go. I gotta go find them some carrots so we can get a bunch of little piggies in here. I think potatoes also work though, so we can just pick a few of these and just plant those back. Yes, yes, we love potatoes. Perfect, we got a little piggy. Oh, we got a whole family in here now. One last element to add in is a big custom oak tree in front. Where behind the scenes, I've been spending the last few weeks building custom trees every day to practice inside my test world, resulting in all of these new trees being built and it is pretty cool seeing the first new tree being added here into the hardcore world which finishes off the pig day spa for our porky friends where we can bring another one to the herd are you a herd of pigs that sounds weird what is a group of pigs a piggle no. Now for the bridge, where I want a slight diagonal stepped over by two blocks. But I actually do need some materials to get started, so I flew over to the nearby spruce forest and went back to my primary task of chopping down and regrowing spruce trees to satiate the unending need for spruce logs to build with. Leaning back home to build up the bridge itself, bringing in a little bit of crimson wood as an accent. It's pretty simple, but I'm actually really happy with how the bridge turned out. Leading right into the next adventure, where I was planning together a bunch of blocks but i found myself in a lush cave and just decided to embrace the adventure vibes trying to run around and find as many small drip leaf and spore blossoms as i could to bring home and decorate with as they are some of my favorite items in the game with that cave explored i came back to my safe space inside of the lumber mill to craft down a bunch of different wood materials to create the mushroom mill a lumber mill for mushroom trees mushroom mill name work in progress i also want a strong base to support the machinery along the edge of the river so down in the quarry i picked up a bunch of tough blocks deep slate stone bricks and the works then a quick trip down into the copper factory to de-age some copper and wax it as i want to bring in a pop of color into the mushroom area for kind of the fantasy vibes and lastly a quick stop at the grocery store as i forgot a few things this time i became the guy in your math textbooks with an inventory full of melons but these shulker boxes here have everything we're going to be needing and a few extra decoration blocks to build up the mushroom mill first as always i just need to clear out a few trees for ourselves back here to get a space to build with before we get up to the lumber mill itself i want to get our wheel in place using a tough wall right in here that we can build off of and real quick right over here i'm thinking we can throw in a little bit of our blue glass and just hoppers going into the wall as a way to collect all the items coming down can i waterlog a hopper no 
but our waterway is built out again so that's pretty good i'm thinking the wheel itself that's gonna kind of hide this down here is gonna come out like that and we have space for two blocks in each way that'll work and now i just need to build the rest of the wheel that fills the space pretty well so i think it'll work starting with the front door out of crimson then adding in a more monotone section to the warehouse portion of the middle i added a big entrance ramp off here to the side as we all like a lot of options so i need to clear out a few more trees to connect back to the road and i'll just fill in the leftover course dirt that i have on me right now Ooh, had enough so nice and there it's gone above the water wheel i want a three-story building to house the machinery and eventual storage room on the inside Using some of these frog lights here behind the windows as we'll probably hide the redstone back here or more realistically, uh, nothing's gonna be back there, but it's fine. It's got light now. It's looking pretty good, but it is spooky outside. Oh, there's a skeleton. No, no, there's two. I was trying to sleep. Leave me alone. Thank you. This is why we sleep through the nights instead of staying awake. I'm continuing the front that we have over there onto the back here with all of the mushrooms being thrown in. And hopefully I've got enough red mushrooms on hand to do this. And that should be enough. Perfect. And then where? Ooh, nope. Don't need you. Or you. Or you. With these in place, I just need to finish the frame. And much better. Now I just need to connect the tops with some of our spruce planks. Back to the mill building, I finished off the remaining sides to close it in and added in a deep slate roof. With this cool connection up here with some hanging torch flowers and soul lanterns. We'll connect that into the other roof in a second. And now for a very fun addition here with a bright and colorful tower sticking up on the corner. I really love how this turned out, but I have one more addition to add in here. We add a strip birch log up there and then maybe like here. I want to start connecting a bunch of birch trap doors here together to make it look like a bit of like a conveyor belt of sorts going all the way over up. But all the way around is a little bit of a uh, machinery. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. A little steampunky element added into our fantasy mushroom mill. This thing has a lot of features, a lot of different characteristics. With a nice polished deep slate bow, I mean roof to wrap it all together. And I really love how this looks along the road. Just uh, this, this, uh, this needs some love. Especially as I do have a little back door out here that leads us to this mud pathway to actually get up into the brown mushroom tree farm zone. Maybe I also link a path around the back of the house that is currently floating so we need to fix both of those i do have plenty of dirt and grass in here we can use to tackle that for now just gotta fill in this entire place along the back i'm out of course dirt but we'll clean up the pathway along here soon for now it at least will connect us around and is a touch smoother before we get too busy with that though i should probably tackle the storage room on the inside because that was the, kind of the point of the building i've connected up the front door here all the way to the back so that we can now walk out and get access to our brown mushroom tree farm i should probably cover this up here with some mud brick much better now to keep this pretty simple and easy i want the storage room to be down in the basement so i don't have to worry about bringing items up now somewhere back here i did yes right there perfect i dug a few blocks in from the hoppers so i can figure out what level we need to be working at and we can just stop the water right there now i just need a room to build inside of i'm always surprised at how many blocks you get from digging out a pit we'll just throw all that inside the chest here now i just need to get some redstone supplies out of here so we can build a few item sorters just gonna need a a few extra repeaters i don't know where my deep slate box is and i have a rule in this world to always use polished deep slate for redstone contraptions don't look at that one right there i i forgot i forgot but that way i don't accidentally mine into them and break everything hopefully it's in here yes there it is deep slate you go back in the ender chest i want to set up three different item sorters out here for every single different mushroom type we're going to get and then this right here is just going to be bulk overflow i built a few of these in my time so thankfully i can actually throw it together from memory now I just need some mushroom stem, brown mushroom block, and red mushroom block. Rename some sticks to something different. Then if we come in here, throw our sticks in, then the red mushroom blocks. Here we can do the sticks, brown mushroom blocks, and then uh, remaining ones in there with the stems. I'm going to need a lot more chests, but that should work to at least start these, and then they'll just all flow down to the bottom. Looks like we are working with that being at 41, and now we just need some more wood. Oh, no, scary. We're fine. Totally fine. I want to use packed mud for the floor, but I ran out of mud. So a quick trip over here into the city. We can convert some of the dirt that I gathered up when we cleared out the area into mud. Put that in the offhand and we just start breaking. 
this should hopefully be enough mud and we can just toss the water bottles down there because i'm not gonna need them quick stop at the lumber mill here we can grab a good amount of dark oak logs and some spruce then down to the wheat farm storage room we've got plenty of the stuff in here oh my it's almost full i love mud packed mud is so good best farm ever auto wheat farm is amazing so my current thought here is on the inside we can just start stepping down with some of our mud going all the way across with these slabs just to save a few blocks and perfect a full lap and we are right down here next to the chest i don't know what i wanted to do in here except to make it something easy to access so i ran through some stripped dark oak walls and some spruce for the ceiling with a few frog lights behind the chest to light it up But now I should be able to pick up all of our mushroom blocks that we have in here. And if I just drop them into the water, they should all sort themselves in the storage room. Slowly, that, that hopper is going to be pretty full. The upstairs here could really use some love, but for now we can walk all the way down and the storage room should be working. Yes, we're getting brown mushrooms in there and then the mushroom stems will go in there. Now I have this big open face over here. Knowing how I tend to gather materials, I will likely run out of these little mushrooms. These guys right in here, we need those to grow the big trees. But if we create a dark room, we should actually be able to manually harvest them down here if anything runs out. This should work for our brown mushrooms over here. If we just fill in all of the base with podsol, we can have the light level a little bit higher and they can still grow. So if we just fill in some brown mushrooms in here. They will naturally grow and extend the other blocks. That looks pretty good for the brown mushroom. We can maybe clean up the top and make it a little bit more cave-like. Nope, not there. Gotta cover that. And all of this. That is definitely dark and spooky in there and will definitely spawn mobs. Okay, um, I think I need glow lichen. For now, torch. The red mushroom pocket in the cave here is ready to go too. And I looked it up and apparently mushrooms will only grow if there's less than five within a nine by nine by three area of their same type. So I'm not sure how effective these are gonna be, but I'm only gonna put like three or maybe four mushrooms in them. Then for a little bit of lighting, we can add glow lichen. So it's not super bright back here as I think they also grow off of light level two. So we do a little bit right over in there and there and then, uh, yep. Oh, nope, that's spawnable. We'll do one there too. Lastly, a quick run around with a little mossy cobblestone to make it feel a little bit more wet and damp down here. These are meant to be pretty basic as almost like a last resort if I really mess up the mushroom farm. And something like that should do the trick in here. While I was down there, I was thinking this build looks a little too pristine and I want to have more of the fantasy vibe so we can bring in some of our spore blossoms to get the beautiful particles around. And then also maybe a few glow berries that we can shear to stop them from glowing and get some extra light. Well, shear them stop them from growing and then they can start glowing words are hard second floor awesome can go back here so we get a little bit around this section too and for this blank wall we can maybe have it look like they're growing a bunch of glowing glow lichen a lot of growing and glowing going on right here and we always feel like you just get in points of time in your life where you're like i just can no longer speak i just can't form words anymore because i feel like i'm in one of those stints right now i'm sure in another few weeks it'll be totally fine but right now i'm just like blah 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 blah, blah. i just i can't talk but there we go just a little bit of extra foliage added and i think that was worth it before we leave on the next adventure let's breed up our pigs one more time in here six seems like a pretty good sized family yeah that'll be perfect and i need to clean up this mess and much better except my wings are very broken now so before we go too far i gotta fix that i'm not gonna risk flying out over the end of right now since the wings are pretty dead so we'll just stop here in the nether at the wither skeleton farm where the dogs have been doing work oh wow amazing we're all done oh thanks pups don't worry i voted armadillo for you yeah i did we're gonna get them armor and they're gonna sit there in style my goal is to bring home some mushrooms from the mushroom field biome as we have so much room for stuff to include Thankfully, a long time ago when I found all the biomes in Minecraft, I wrote down the coordinates for a mushroom biome is. So if we get a little obsidian and we fly into the nether, 
dirt. And I think I need to fly off this direction. I gotta find some coordinates here. Wow, this is really not that far away. Okay, if we build another portal right here, this should drop us out at a mushroom island biome. I, I really hope. I can see my nether hub from here. Please, 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 please. Yes, we're on a top of a giant mushroom. I was hoping to be a little closer to the ground to bring some mushrooms up. Are there mushrooms? There are mushrooms. Good thing I forgot to put all the junk away from the building we've been doing. So we can just create a little staircase for our mushrooms to follow us up. Now to round up a few of our cows. I want to bring at least four home with me as we have the red mushrooms here. But if we can get a lightning storm to spawn, it's been a while since one. So I'm hoping we can get one soon. Oh, don't die. But we can strike two of them with lightning and they turn into brown mushrooms. You know what? Four is enough to start the herd. We can, we can go with these. All right, come on, everybody. This will be the most difficult bar. Don't die. Oh, please. Try that again, buddy. Come on now. Just walk up the blocks. Walk up, up the blocks. All four of you up the blocks. Yep. Right into the nether. Just me and four mushrooms hanging out on the nether roof. Look at them go. They stylish as heck and they quick as heck. Oh, buddy, we're almost there. Come on now, please. Everybody through the portal and welcome to your new home. Oh, oh, uh, how'd, how'd you get up there? Don't, don't die. Don't die. No, don't go that way. Come back this way. We've safely made it out of the nether this is a great start we are more than halfway there okay come on everybody if you see sweet berry bushes don't walk into them we've lost too many sniffers to the berries don't eat the berries this is giving so many flashbacks to trying to move the sniffers around i'm not enjoying this i'm not i want this to be done now oh we're so much better than the sniffers we all made it across the bridge no don't die don't die don't die don't die no 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 i now have four mushrooms at my world spawn this this is pretty cool <laughs> I've been trying really hard to figure out more ways to incorporate Minecraft mobs and animals into the builds I do just to make them feel a little bit more alive. And I think the element of bringing the mushrooms over is a really, really good way to go and slowly working towards the goal of having a home for every single mob where we live here. I can't really see myself building a giant mob museum or a zoo or anything like that, but this is a more fun way for me to be able to still incorporate them all into the world. This gives the animals a lot more context other than, hey, I'm gonna put you in a box and a wall with no windows so I can stare at you. So, you know, this is this is fun right we're having fun right right yeah we're having fun yeah he said we're having fun speaking of having fun i'm gonna set a lightning rod up right down in here and create a little fence around it for two of our mushrooms to hang out in maybe a little bit smaller so they're closer to the lightning rod and you two my friends are going to come down here with me and jump in this very safe place in the fence i swear it's, you're gonna have a great time thank you while waiting for a thunderstorm i started to clear out the trees and the area and level off the terrain for another animal pen all i got was this stupid rainstorm but no thunder yet the red mushroom herd is slowly growing up here and in the meantime we can finish off their spot over here with a little bit of a shelter for them to get out of this gross rain and we can make their pasture just a touch bigger i'm sinking three by three gaps over there and then we do five wide on this side sleeping away to get rid of the rain for now and we can start by connecting these going across with a few little archways like this and some more of the logs on top to go across the gap and i think for this the best way to do it is just going to be step up some stairs to the middle so it has a consistent slope and to make them slightly connect i think we can just add in a few slabs underneath it creates a little bit more of a wonky shape but I do like it. And then we can just do another at the top. And we can send the spruce stairs around at the base for the full trim. And that's a good start. I finally figured out what I want to do on the roof. I've been walking around for like 15 minutes and I've got it. We're going to use copper. I know, really, really a new thing here. But I'm really excited about the new copper blocks. So I want an excuse to use our old current copper blocks and be sad that I don't have the new ones. But we're going to use them. If I can find my stone cutter. This is a little too cleaned up for my liking. So I'm thinking we can do a lot of these down to this third stage here. And then a lot going down to the second. Just to get... I, I just love these second and third stages of copper that we can get in here. And then from this, we just got to go around and wax it all. And there we go. With a few extra details added in here, we can finish off the outside structure of this place pretty well. Then we just got to make it a little bit more habitable for our mushrooms. Give them a little uh, food back here inside some composters. I really love using the nether sprouts and warped roots over here. They can be a little mushroomy stuff for these guys to chew on. Maybe it's like a blue-ish grass that we've used around here in uh, other places. And there we go. So mushroom for activities in here. Our red mushrooms have a great pasture up here and we've got four of them now. But 
the future brown mushrooms in waiting um they still haven't got the zappy zap yet it has rained again since last time but uh no thunderstorms yet so i think for now what i want to do is to expand the brown mushroom pasture just to get it ready we're gonna leave them inside their little box for now but we'll give them the idea that they're gonna have a future space that they can walk around in i can push this back a little bit over here and throw in another one of our little tough brick retaining walls to keep our mushrooms in and give them a little bit more space and the fence is just gonna run right here along the road and all the way along this bit of a cliff that i've been building just smack a little entrance point right over in here and you two can have this entire pasture as soon as we get a thunderstorm so think about thunderstorms you know i should probably get rid of those lightning rods up there as that might pull the lightning away we can throw these back after i did put them upside down so i'm just gonna throw dirt up here for now so it's easy to place them in after wait it got really dark i think it's just rain i i think this is just rain again now to play the game of keeping myself distracted and busy so i'm still loading in the world and doing things here but uh yeah we wait for a thunderstorm which means for our brown mushrooms they can have a little bit of an overhang right over in here too that's just gonna link back in using some slabs to connect in with the retaining wall nope that's not gonna work those are hanging way too far down normally i hate seeing thunderstorms and i just skip them right away because they're really noisy and i find them ruining recordings often which is why you never really see them because they just kind of sleep through them right away but now when i really want one there's no thunderstorms think about thunderstorms please another day and still no storms so while we wait to stay busy, I want to add in a few of those new custom trees I've been designing into this region. Reason being is I want to help hide this ugly mass of mushroom blocks I've created over here. Let's grab some oak logs, some birch logs, a bunch of spruce here that we can turn into sticks to create fences and birch fences. A load of mud brick walls in here. And I think I want to try some brown stained glass paints. Acacia leaves, oak leaves, and I'm pretty much out of birch leaves. I'll gather up the remaining leaves after I clear my inventory a bit more by building up these first two trees, which do a fairly good job of blocking the sight lines, but still giving a glimpse of what's coming, which I think looks really, really good as we walk over from spawn. I'm very, very happy with this new tree in here. I'm trying to really show all the branches now, and I think it does a pretty good job of that. Well, yeah, all you can really see is fences, but, but it's a good tree. And this one, we've got another oak tree up here okay moving on moving on i need to go get jungle leaves and i need to go get birch leaves wait hold on a second that is way ah! that's way darker than normal that's a thunderstorm we have to get back to the mushrooms please please continue please don't end please don't end also please don't kill the mushrooms but zappy do the zappy thing no not over there lightning rod lightning rod in the ground no i don't have my wings <laughs> wait i heard it i heard i heard the zap please please do we have brown mushrooms yes yes we have them okay uh we're gonna get out of here and before the lightning does any more damage we need to sleep and just get rid of it oh my gosh that enderman was zooming around goodbye thunderstorm and hello brown mushrooms come here guys do we get a brown baby as well we do oh i love this that this makes me so happy i've only seen these in game before ever maybe once or twice so having them in my own hardcore minecraft world that's that's really cool give me a regular boring mushrooms oh it's fine you can where's there's the fourth one there's the oh, was a little word what are you are you oh hi hi yeah down here thank you before i totally forget let's put the lightning rods back up here to keep the entire region safe with the mushrooms makeover complete i got back to working on building up even more trees adding in a few more of those smaller ones with the jungle leaves and two bigger round birch trees to the area and now i'm happy to say this mushroom lumber mill is complete with so much extra life added in and i finally have a place to harvest mushroom blocks Taking the extra time to incorporate our pig pen over here, as well as the two mushroom pastures we have up there with the reds and down here with our brown mushrooms, has made me realize that I need to do this more often. Just bringing more life into my Minecraft world makes me really, really happy. And I'm glad I took the time to do this. So if you could take the two seconds to press the like button on this video, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Where don't forget to check out the second channel where there's a comment of the day video. Thank you so much for